from Ski Instructor Academy, and uh, I'm here with Jamie to do Hi a guys. little to talk about another subject regarding ski analysis. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, so we often get um, asked, Jamie, the, the sort of well certainly from the sales team side as well, get asked, you know, what level do I need to be to join one of your courses? And it, it's one of the most difficult subjects. Jamie and I have talked about it, I think, on previous pod vlogcasts or whatever about the what people's perception is of their skiing and how they describe their skiing. We've tried different ways on booking forms to tick boxes. And at the end of the day, often it comes down to just saying, how many weeks you've done? When did you last ski? Because their perception of skiing is just weird, isn't it? There's just no control because they don't understand the sport. So it's hard for them to say really if they are an all-mountain skier or not. Yeah, I think again, the word... As I mentioned in the last one, is sport. It's is is the it's a leisure activity I think for most people coming in, and we need to make it a sport. So I am um, like Paul says, it, it doesn't. Yeah, it's, it's a number of weeks. That's just to kind of get the people matched into a group of where they're going to be traveling at a similar speed down the hill. They're going to you know a similar amount of mi mileage under their feet. That doesn't mean that necessarily someone who's got twenty weeks skiing is technically better than someone who's got six. Um, it's just more for speed for us to be able to move the group around um, together, and that people are kind of happy with the speed and the pace that that group's traveling at. Um, and then obviously techniques, techniques, or just it depends. Like we said in the previous one, just because you've you've done a lot of practice doesn't mean you've been doing perfect practice. You could just be building up bad motor skills and movement patterns. Yeah, and there's a lot of parameters. I mean, obviously we look at the, you know, let's say we have 300 people coming on a ski instructor course. We're, we're, we're looking also at not just how many weeks they've done, but we, we will look at their age, um, because that's important as well. Um, we're interested more to do with things like, do they do any other sports? Um, are they active? Is their job active? Is it not? You know, a lot of these people coming in at 19, they, they, they've maybe had seven, eight months of stress because they've been studying completely absorbed in that and th they've had to sideline all their previous sports etc so they come to us um often not in the, mo the fittest position because they sidetrack the sport and they've also then when they finish studying they've probably been tanking up for a, a couple of weeks and then the opposite side of things you're getting people 30s and their 40s up 50 60 and those people you know are stiffer you know find it a little bit more difficult to maintain the the pace and dynamics of some of the um the, the courses because they're they're full on you know they are full on when it comes to skiing but i am playing here jamie some of the uh, a group that would be typical of a, an average group of 30 40 people coming on a course that we would see um and this would be everybody here i don't think there's anybody that i would have highlighted out and went oh no god shouldn't be there yeah um everybody's sort of getting down but you can see they're completely different and of course ski instructor academy has a huge advantage over any other company in the world really is we have a team of sort of 40 coaches and trainers so we're very keen on the first day to very quickly distribute them the groups correctly aren't we yeah i think that it is essential that you you're moving with the kind of pack that you should be moving with that um you're not i think you want to always train with people that are better than you but that's the coach is better than you so that's the person that's going to you know elevate your game um and then you're only in competition with yourself and you can move at your pace rather than chasing people around because then you're building all these bad moving patterns that we're trying to take away of just rushing down the hill and pushing to break as opposed to steer. And so I think it's a really important that you're moving um, and you're in an environment that you're comfortable with. A group that, that works for you because it doesn't matter whether you're the best in the group or the worst in the group, both those characters have a frustration if the group's too spread out. They have to be similar. And what I mean by that is sometimes we group people, Jamie, um, maybe it's to do with a movement pattern, don't we? We don't just do by speed. We might say ah, all these people have serious ankle mobility strength issues for example or have rotation issues yep. and we might put those together to try and shortcut the teaching progress to say right because group teaching is not easy you know when you've got private lessons the lessons focused on that person's weaknesses and strengths whereas in a group you might have five six major things you want to you know work with whereas if the group fits together that could be narrowed down to just two yeah or three yeah yeah i think it's so important for us on the first day that's one we're taking on board the information that i've been given prior to at uh, the start of the course is regarding weeks and different things like that and the level 
and that the client thinks they're at that's all been they've all been put into groups on the first day according to that and then um, it's up to the coaches to then by lunchtime really to have organized the groups within themselves to where everybody's kind of feeling pretty comfortable and confident within their group of um, up to eight people and with the, the wealth of experience we have as a company we're well aware that doing this it's the first day often on snow for people and the first maybe they've only had a couple of warm-up runs we know they're not going to be skiing at their best as they were last season or whatever you know it's going to take them time so we're trying to in our minds also project think where is this person going to be in a week's time the potential they have because that's most important to us to know the potential of the client over the, the period of the course yeah but i think um you can always see the mistakes the motor pattern's going to be there whether you you know you've you, you're at the place that you were you know where you were comfortable at the end of your last holiday whatever it is the motor pattern's still going to be there and we're still going to see what you know how you generally ski whether you're moving faster on the platform or comfortable on the platform or not um, and we always pick stages. an appropriate terrain to do this on. You know, we're looking at it's yeah, relatively this is, easy This terrain. is the bottom of a, a shallow blue, really. It's a cruisy run. Um, so, it, you know, we'll try to make it where no one's going to go defensive with the skiing. They're all yeah. going to be comfortable and confident on it to go out and show their best kind of turns. And this is what's important about this is this is not about critique at this uh, first stage. We're not looking at going, oh, this person's rotating, bracing outside leg, they're sitting back. That's not important. Often what's important here is what is the confidence level? What's the what's the speed like? What's the turn shape like? Some of the most basic fundamentals, because if somebody can move down the slope and have a turn shape, we're pretty happy. We're pretty happy at that stage. Oh, def definitely. I mean, like we're generally with everybody, no matter what the level, you're always just going back to the basics. You're also always just trying to fix their balance, really, and um, and and skill set. So, yeah, I mean, and it's interesting, you know, some of them are going down. You'll probably look and going, well, well, he's quite a good skier. You know, he looks all right. Surely, you know, he's ready. He could go for the exam. There's nobody in this group that was ready for the exam. I can tell you that now, even if they, you know, went in the exam the next day and the, how they're looking here. There's a lot of funky things go on with good skiers as well. And one of the major problems, of course, in a ski instructor course is, they have to be able to ski accurately in a nice slow parallel turn parallel uh, plow parallel and of course plow turns and that that really throws it out for the, yeah, the better it's skiers the, it's the more basic stuff for the better skiers that you're seeing coming down now and it's the more advanced stuff for the basic skiers that you're coming down um so yeah the more big basic skiers generally you know fly through the more basic turns and the plows and plow parallels and the more advanced skiers fly through the, the shorts yeah. and longs. And even when I watch some of the, 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 the better skiers go down, Jimmy, you can see they're lacking oh, steer, really steering. Steering. <laughs> Steering's, yeah, never really yeah. been present. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there's loads of stuff we can do. And, and ultimately, it's, it's not just about becoming that, you know, level two ski instructor. It's about becoming the best you can. Um, and that's our job as coaches to try and make you um, the best you can and give you an understanding of the sport so you can go away after that point when you're going off and doing your job throughout the season and self-teach. You can become a better skier throughout the season because you're going to understand of where you're at and where you should be going with your technique. Yeah. And a lot of the time when I watch some of these better skiers go down, they, 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 they're fast-ish, you know, and they're edging. Some of them are railing the ski. But as Jamie says, they're, they're really not influencing the arc of the ski at this stage. They really don't understand what that means. And it's not their fault. If you just tell them, maybe they'll do it because they're, they're relatively good skiers. Um, and equally, when I go back to some of the, you know, more nervous skiers here, the slower skiers, some of them had actually better turn shape in effect at least they were getting yeah. across the hill but obviously their the mechanics is 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 all over the place but, but when you are sorry but i think as well for the like you're talking about the guys railing and doing that kind of long turns if we pr put that on appropriate terrain for exam on a steeper red is would they still have that skill set and then yeah. the lack of direction that they've got in a flat run put that on a steep run they're just the platform's going to massively run away from them so it's it's you know it's everybody needs coaching at every level we still need coaching um all that's every day I'm going out and focusing on something to try and improve. So it never, it never stops. You always want to be the best you can be. Yeah. And that's, so when people ask that question, you know, what level should I be at? Well, in the case of Ski Instructor Academy, I mean, we have courses specially manipulated to fit anything. You know, if we get somebody who is 
obviously very, very weak. You know, they've done a week or two. And even when they turn around and go, yeah, but I'm really sporty, you know, I'm this, I'm that. We still tell them that, look, you need to build in an extra five days training or an extra 10 days training to a standard course. That's because of the lack of mileage at that stage. You know, you do need a certain amount of kilometers on the hill really even if it's bad kilometers you need a certain amount of kilometers so definitely coming in on those on those prep courses prior to the the main yeah. course makes a big difference and yeah he, we're talking about level to come in is i'm the guy who's on the hill the most is you know we have complete beginners coming two weeks prior to joining a, a six week level two course and they'll make it and the reason they do is is they don't have any ingrained uh Bad habits. Patterns, bad habits we've got a blank canvas so we can go out and paint a, a perfect picture or a better picture or the picture we want to see from day one um so there is no you know limitation i don't think really is no you can you come could. in as a complete beginner and make it right through to a level one two ski instructor or you could come in with five ten twenty fifty hundred two hundred weeks we have the full spectrum i mean when we're dealing with over 500 uh, clients in a season that have become ski instructors we see everything we see already qualified instructors for example you know people who have got a canadian or a Bayesi or a austrian or whatever it is and we're taking it to the next step for them and um, so what level do you need to be at well it doesn't really matter but you need to be on the right course i think the answer to that question you need to make sure you're booking the right course and obviously ask the sales team for advice they will tell you what they are recommending you can also speak to the team in resort wherever it is and have a bit of an idea you can even send a video you know as, as people do and we'll say yeah i mean if you, you're fine you you'll get there um so the, there is no level but on the normal sort of course where we're looking at like a a 20 days of building and preparation followed by a 10 day exam this sort of level is basically what we're looking at this is all fine that we're watching yeah. go down we can work with this and that's the important thing be a pleasure you, to work with this it'd be a pleasure you need to be coachable you need to be open you need to be um focused and you will make the level as a ski instructor whether you'd be like some of these at 18 19 or whether you'd be 60 70 or 80 it's it's still within grasp um and that's that's what we wanted to answer today yeah anything to say no, just, you know, put in hard work and you'll get there. So. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.